It might seem a little offbeat to start off today with this thought, but it actually ties into the theme of this episode. So go along with me. Sometimes you can tell a lot about a person from the name of their website. Websites that consist of a person's name are fine, although if the person's not a celebrity, you can't get any insights from the name alone. But then there are the websites that are made up of descriptive words. Before I bring her on, I want to tell you the name of my guest's website. It's Joyful Radiance. Take in those words for a minute and think about how they make you feel. Don't they bring a smile to your face? Don't they lift up your heart, make you feel even just a tiny bit better about your world? Well, we're going to meet the woman behind that website now. Kate Hartsong is an author and speaker and coaches her clients to realize their greatness in order to make a positive difference in their lives. She calls herself the confidence coach, and we're going to find out what her secret sauce is to help people raise their confidence levels and feel that joyful radiance within. So let's begin. Welcome to the Dream Power Experience, Kate. Oh, it's so wonderful to be here. Thanks, Debbie. I'm so happy to be here and, and very excited. Oh, um, I am too. But Kate, why do you call yourself the confidence coach? I call myself the confidence coach because I mainly focus really on uh, building confidence and empowering my clients so that they can make the changes that they want to make. I myself way back when I was younger and as a child and a young adult, um, I actually had no confidence, but a lot of shame. And I know what it's like to transcend this. It's, you know, took a lot of work. I had psychotherapy. I did workshops. I did a lot of reading with self-help books. I had come to a point in my life back then knowing that I was so anxious and frustrated and seeing others happy and realizing also I had no confidence. And it was a lot of it was the childhood um, trauma and experiences. Um, I'll share a short story. When I was two years old, I fell out of a window. I was a very curious toddler, Debbie. And but as a result, I lost most of my hearing. And therefore, I grew up thinking something was terribly wrong with me and thought, you know, what? Nobody wants me. There's something wrong. I have a hearing loss. And I was too ashamed to share that with anyone. Consequently, between that and some childhood stuff with the family, I had no confidence. So being able to transcend that, ah, I'm living proof it is possible. It, it seems like a whole different lifetime. So I call myself the confidence coach because really it gives me so much passion and so much joy to offer to others to really know that they can tap into their greatness and raise their confidence. <laughs> I'm living proof. Yeah, I tell you, it is so important. I mean, I didn't have the same kind of traumas that you did, but I also uh, didn't feel confident for a long stretch of my life. Uh, but I want to ask you this. Um, first of all, do you think that, that shame is the opposite of confidence? Oh, that's a good question. In some ways, yes, I think so, Debbie. That's a really good way to put it in perspective. Confidence to me means feeling great about ourselves. I am in alignment. I am not shy to go out and just share my gifts and to help others. And shame is where I go within, to me anyway, thinking there is really, really something wrong with me. And yeah, that's a good way to put it. Okay, well... Uh... When someone comes to you now and they say, I don't feel confident, what do you do? I share with them, hey, I do understand and you're not alone. It's important for people to know that they are not the only one on the planet experiencing it. And then I share with them. And yet, you know, I'm living proof that I've been able to transcend this. And I have many different simple techniques and tools to help to build confidence. 
I don't sugarcoat with them. It's not anything that happens overnight because we need to change underneath what is the belief that they feel like they, you know, for whatever reason, aren't confident. Maybe they don't feel like they're capable. Maybe they have negative self-talk. So I am a confidence coach, but not a psychologist. So we really don't delve into the reasons behind it. But we do look at, well, where are you today? And here are some very concrete and simple tools and techniques. Plus through the coaching, we can, you know, the, the client will come with the realization, as you know, because you're a coach as well. The client will come with a realization of, well, what works best for them? How can they incorporate the techniques? So I support them with using those tools and to really empower them to know there's amazing cumulative effects using the tools. And one of those tools is minding on being aware of our self-talk and how can we stop ourselves from beating ourselves up and instead have the talk that uplifts us. So those are, uh, that's one tool and there's many other tools as well. Yeah, I, I think it, for most people, and maybe most might not be right, but for so many people, self-awareness in and of itself is the key. Because oh. I believe most of the time we're sleepwalking through life and we're just not aware that we can do things. We don't have to just be stuck in whatever we're doing. Uh, so you did say tools. So uh, share with me another one of your tools. Sure. And before I do, I just want to echo so much the truth of what you just shared. The self-awareness is key. Well, actually, I'll share that as a tool. Having self-awareness to be able to catch ourselves when we are using negative self-talk. And I know what that was like. I used to call myself stupid all the time. And it just becomes habit. It's our mode of operation. But when we come into mindfulness, mindfulness and awareness, we can then better catch ourselves and then switch and replace it with the positive words. For example, let's say I... I what I used to do is call myself stupid and catching myself, I would say, I am doing the best I can. I made a mistake and I am still okay. So finding something that works, that feels good. If a person doesn't feel like it's really true, you know, the ego will say, oh, that's not true. So if we make an affirmation <laughs> saying, for example, I really am okay and lovable. But the mind, the ego might say, oh, no, you're not. Something that was recommended to me so long ago, wealth, it's such a kernel of wisdom. Say instead, I am willing to learn. I am okay and lovable. And you know, Debbie, the mind hears that. I am willing to believe I am okay and lovable. And then after a while, start saying, I am okay and lovable. So that kind of sets the brain up. And um, so there's that one tool. Yeah, it is amazing, you know, how our brain works and the things it tells us when we're not even aware of it. And I love that little switch of saying, you know, I'm willing to learn because that is a transition way of dealing with it yeah that's a good way to put it a transition instead of jumping right into it if it doesn't feel believable transition and acclimate and set the kind of prime the brain into yeah because you know the brain listens to us <laughs> well Kate, yeah. Yeah, Kate you so you said that you you know pretty much dealt with you know not feeling confident you know for a while was there a turning point where you finally said to yourself, it can be different? Yes. I remember when I was in college, it was in my early 20s. I had experienced just regular 
consistent anxiety and frustration and just a general unhappiness. And I observed other people being happy and some not so happy, but many people happy. And I started learning and realizing I cannot live this way anymore. And maybe I can change. And I don't recall, I might have met someone or maybe a couple of people who were instrumental in sharing wisdom with me. Um, as I talk, I do remember there was a powerful weekend retreat on expanding ourselves and personal growth and development. And I remember learning from that. And that was probably one of the catalysts as well. I can change. I can make a difference and feel better. I don't have to be in this space. And one of the biggest things I learned was the self-talk and the awareness of how am I talking to myself? Would I talk to my best friend or anyone the way I talk to myself? No. So yes, uh, slowly I was started being a sponge and, you know, as I mentioned, reading a lot of self-help books, having some psychotherapy and going, uh, releasing trauma through that, as well as some, as some other modalities. So when you're working with people now, uh, is there a timeline for how long it takes for them to feel their confidence? You know, that is a uh, really depends on the person. And it depends on how long have they been in this state of no confidence. What is their internal beliefs? So we can shift. It can sometimes take a few weeks. I have uh, some clients who use this, excuse me, <coughs> a particular technique. And there's so many of them. But one of them is the writing down every day three things that you acknowledge yourself for just being consistent every day and it doesn't have to be a big thing it could be acknowledging that you've made a great meal for your family or acknowledge yourself for going to uh going to work even though you're not feeling well and you don't like the job acknowledging yourself and that does help people to start the momentum and that could take a few even a few days but more a few weeks so it depends on what the person does and how often do they remember to have that awareness of self-talk self-talk is number one but there's also other ways that we can build that so it varies from person to person, but sometimes people can start seeing results even in a few days. Not that they're going to be completely transformed, but that they can start feeling better. And then they may go back to the general modem, but then go back and use those exercises. And uh, it's all about creating new habits that focus yeah. on that. Yes, thank you. That's a good way to put it creating new habits, and then embodying it, and living it, and allowing ourselves to completely be immersed in knowing the truth that we really are great. We may not feel like that, but we really are. I know, I don't know anyone here in the audience, and yet I do know each one has amazing fantastic and there are so many gifts and talents that each one has and then when we can step into that greatness it is not being egotistical as you know Debbie it is to recognize our our skills our unique combination of talents and then we're better able to share that with others and when we know we are no better or less than anyone else we're just in our own truth and anchor into that, that also helps to build that self-confidence. Well, Kate, what happens to your clients when they can finally say, I feel confident now? Hmm. Oh, I love witnessing their expansiveness, their stepping into their full potential. This is what happens 
when my clients and anyone who was working on their confidence, I witnessed that they're better able to navigate or deal with upsets in life, knowing that they have the confidence, knowing they have uh, know how to deal with it. They don't have to beat themselves up. I witnessed them following their heart and having the courage to do that. I witnessed them being empowered where, you know, it's okay for me to change jobs. I'm really scared. I don't know where my next paycheck will be when I create my own business. But now I have the confidence to be able to move forward and create that. So I, that's, those are the type of things I witness. Yeah, you, you just mentioned that that four-letter word, fear. So do you feel that when a person feels confident, they're better able to deal with fear in their lives? Hmm. Generally, I think so. And it's not that we will never have fear again, as you know. A another excellent question. Thank you, Debbie. But yes, having confidence, knowing whatever it may be, knowing I deserve to have good things or the confidence to know I have the ability to overcome this challenge. Confidence, knowing that I have the ability to head on right into that flame of fire of fear because I have trust and confidence in myself. So those are things that we can do. Fear will come up, but we have the ability and the sense of empowerment to work through whatever challenges. I consider myself very confident, and yet I've had situations of fear come up. And sometimes that ego will just go right into that fear. My heart races and I feel scared. And, and then I know certain techniques to deal with it and bring myself into processing the upset and not to deny it. But then because I'm confident, I know the tools I can use to then get myself back into the place of calm and center and awareness after going through processing that fear. Uh, do you see any correlation between feeling confident and self-love? Oh gosh, yes, absolutely, completely. I believe that when we can be in a place of self-love, which can mean many different things, when we're in that place of self-love, we recognize, yes, from my perspective, we deserve to have good things. I can take care of myself. I feel more empowered. And when we do that, and we have that self-love, which would also reflect positive self-talk plus positive self-care, I believe that all has an accumulative effect in our building our confidence. Absolutely. I totally, totally agree with that. Uh, you know, I always love to hear examples. Uh, so do you have an example of someone you've coached and how they changed or how feeling confident affected them? Sure. I have one client I've been working with for several months. She, well, for confidentiality, I won't say what type of clients she has, but it is her own business and she has clients. Some of them can be very rude and very demanding. And when we first started, it was very common for her to have clients who would come who were overstepping her boundaries and not being very nice and very demanding. And also would in, want her to change the schedule or go over the time for the session that she does. Through our uh, working together, she has come to realize the importance and the okayness of creating boundaries and that it is absolutely okay and necessary to speak up. So through our coaching, she has become very 
more, more confident and empowered and does now speak up to the clients who overstep her boundaries. And she's also feeling better and recognizing that her um, patterns from past with certain relationships, uh, that she doesn't have to take their verbal abuse and that she's starting much more able to stand up and speak, speak up for herself and not to take everything so internally. Hey, so uh, I want to ask you about this. Um, does meditation play a role at all in your process? I believe it does. Again, another wonderful question. Meditation is a great way to get deep within, to have that relaxation, to tap into source or God or the universe or whatever word we want to use. But it is that, in, in my, my opinion, the wonderful connection and alignment with the all that is. This nurtures and cultivates, um, there's many different words, but for me, a sense of calmness and equanimity during the day. And when I'm in more in that place of connection with myself and the all that is, for me, it brings more calmness and empowerment and alignment. And that again leads to feeling good. And when we feel good, we can have a sense of building that confidence, the feeling of empowerment. Right. Yeah. And I think doesn't also help when, when you have that that good feeling and you've raised your energy level, it helps you also deal with that negative self-talk. Oh gosh, yes. Excellent. Yes. It does, because we're more, uh, we tend more to be in a mindfulness and awareness. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, well, tell me, how does confidence or being confident help us thrive in the turbulent times that we're living in right now? <laughs> confidence is perhaps number one. Well, actually, I think number one is awareness. The confidence is right up there. Confidence in ourselves helps us so, so tremendously in dealing with what's happening in our own lives, plus the turbulence in the whole world. The reason I think that is it helps when we know and are confident in our ability to respond to situations when we're confident in knowing how we can deal with challenges in a way that meets our needs, it helps us then to be more successful in that. It requires our knowing ourselves well and having the confidence, the empowerment, the feeling, you know, yes, it's turbulent or Yes, in my personal life, there's a huge challenge, but yet I know I am strong. I know tools. I've had the experience to be able to deal with things. I can do this again. I can deal with the challenges. And when we recognize the turbulence in the world and we have the confidence in ourselves, then we know we have more of a sense of I can make it through. I don't know how, but I will make it through. Or I do know how I'm going to make it through. I've got those tools. Plus, when we recognize we've been confident, we're in our power, we are anchored into the truth of who we are, we're better able to more quickly and easily tap into that energy space, for lack of a better word. But it is all the energy and how can I show up and not only for myself, but to also serve for others in the turbulent times. So confidence is key. Now, if a person doesn't feel like they're at the point of great confidence, that's okay. Start with one little step at a time. For example, like I shared, write three simple things down every day 
on what you can acknowledge yourself for. That also helps you to focus on what is good and what is going right. And in that, again, we can build that confidence and say, well, I dealt with that huge divorce 10 years ago. I know I can go through this again. Yeah, I'm and so we- glad that you said, you know, start small because so many people think, well, it's so overwhelming and I got to get it all done because we live in this, you know, instant gratification society. Yeah. Yes, when you start small, you it builds on it. One thing builds on another, on another, another. And all of a sudden you realize yeah. that you're 10 steps away from where you started. And Oh, yes. And that helps also. Uh, Kate, you've written several books and your latest one, Humanity's Cry for Change, is a call for all of us to realize that we have the power to create that joyful world for everyone. So can you speak to that concept that that we're all connected and what that means and and how we get that joyful radiance you talk about? Absolutely. I feel very honored to be the messenger of this book. It explains about Each one of us does have the ability to make change, not only in our own lives, but as we do, because we are interconnected, we also add positive to the collective consciousness. This whole concept of interconnectivity really boils down to that on the most elemental level of all life, of everything. Everything is energy. And so it all interpenetrates coalescence with each other Uh, when we're together with others we have our energies actually combine and we've all experienced the sense of interconnection you know when we walk into a room and it's a happy room we tend to feel happy when we can work on our own individual selves we can then again feel better have that confidence and Imagine hundreds of thousands or millions upon millions of people doing their own inner work, gaining their confidence, adding their important piece of the puzzle called humanity. (laughs) Millions of people adding to that adds positive to the collective consciousness. So humanity's cry for change does share key concepts, that being one of them key concepts that help us to better navigate what's going on individually and on in the whole world. But also it, it shares the importance of understanding certain things such as that we are interconnected. When we can understand and live by these concepts, we are better able to have that joyful radiance. We are better able to give, like I mentioned, that important piece of our unique combination of of talents and gifts to others and we can then also recognize what we give to another comes back to us so it is just really key and very simple exercises in there by the way that help us to raise our vibration gain our confidence yeah it's chock full of all kinds of profound wisdom oh that is wonderful is there a final thought you have that you'd like to leave with our audience Yes, a final thought is no matter where you are at on the scale of the level of confidence or self-like or self-love, be willing and open to tap into the greatness of who you are because each person truly has amazing gifts and greatness. So once you can really believe that in yourself, you will start building that confidence. Wonderful. Well put. Kate, how can people find out more about you and your work? My website. Thank you. I um, have my web. Well, my website is the (laughs) joyfulradiance.com, joyfulradiance.com. And on there, if you're interested, opt in for my monthly uplifting e-newsletter and you will get two free meditations. And I'm also offering a complimentary coach session. So feel free to use the contact form on my website, Joyful Radiance. 
And it would be such an honor to serve. We've been speaking about confidence with Kate Hartsong. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. If so, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Until next time, this is Debbie Spector-Weissman saying, sweet dreams, everybody. <laughs>